action. Okay, uh, so 9D.2, finding a sample size. So here we've just got a formula, we're going to be crunching some numbers. It really moves on from, um, from our confidence intervals. So when we wish to estimate the population mean to lie within the confidence interval of width W, the sample size required is, and we've got this formula here. Alright, so we're continuing with the example above where we have the height of year 12 students is measured in the 28 centimetres, the standard deviation is 8 centimetres. Continuing with the above example, how many students need to be sampled to find a 95% confidence interval with a width of 2 centimetres? Okay, so in, this, in our example we have a mean of 178 centimetres, so that means the width is between 177 and 179. Okay, that's the interval we're talking about. That's the width, less than the mean, and less than 179. We want to have a, a really narrow width, just two centimeters. We saw in the example previously, I think we had a width of about five centimeters. The width is just the upper end take the lower. Okay, so in this example, um, how many students need to be sampled to find a 95% confidence interval with width 2 centimetres? So we're going N is equal to 2 times 1.96 times the standard deviation, which is 8, divided by the width, which is 2, and squared. So we're 16 times 2. talk about this as well, 245.8. Alright, regardless of what the decimal is, we're always going to round up to guarantee that width. Okay, so we always round up the number of samples, regardless of if it was below 0.5. Uh, so we need to sample 246 students in order to guarantee a width of 2 centimetres. Now what I want you to point out about this formula here is um, the mean isn't featured anywhere. It only depends on the standard deviation and spread of the data. Uh, and obviously, here we've got 1.96. Remember, that's our value of Z alpha on 2 for 95% confidence interval. That could change depending on the level of confidence we're talking about. I think in the textbook it's only 95% confidence interval. Okay, so that's 9D.2. And then we'll move on to 9D.3, and we don't really need to do any calculations here, we're just going to do a bit of talking. So if we look at 9D.3, um, here we've got the confidence interval for height, and length is between 175.5 to 180.47. Jimmy claims that the true mean height could be as high as 182 centimetres. Okay, so we've got 175.52. Okay, so Jimmy claims it could be as high as 182. Is this within the confidence interval? No. Okay, so therefore we would say no, Jimmy's claim is not true. <coughs> as it does not fall within the confidence interval. We can use C dot I for confidence interval. Okay, but Alex claims that the true mean height could be as low as 176 centimetres. Is her claim true? Yes. Okay, because 176 is within the confidence interval. Okay, yes. 176 is within the So just a reminder what a confidence interval is. We've performed a sample and we've got a sample mean and we're using the sample mean and the sample standard deviation to make a claim about the population. And so we're saying, remember, X bar represents the sample mean. Um, and in our year 12 example, it was 178 centimetres. That's from the sample. 
And so we're saying, based on these results, the mean of the population, okay, remember mu is the mean of the population, is somewhere in this interval, which means it could be as low as 175.52, it could be as high as 180.57, but anything outside that boundary is false, anything within that boundary is true. Cool, so that's both, 9D2, 9D3. So that's the issue.